Senex Technology and the First Look Sensor present Louis Nelson from Advanced Training Systems. In the following video, Louis will demonstrate how to quickly determine the mechanical integrity of an engine using the First Look Sensor. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the First Look's pressure transducer. Now this particular tool can improve your abilities as a technician beyond that of a scanner, beyond that of a typical lab scope. In conjunction with your lab scopes, working with all brands of lab scopes, you're able to connect this unit up and be able to diagnose mechanical problems both in gas and diesel engines. This will improve your abilities to diagnose these problems faster, quicker, and easier. So our objective today is to teach you this tool and how you can make money using it. We have the first look sensor here along with different manufacturers of scopes that it'll work with. So any of your lab scopes, it's a pretty simple tool. This little pressure transducer can go and read pressure from the exhaust pipe for measuring compression pulsation from the engine, today's engine, as well as from the intake manifold and fuel pressure regulators, as well as fuel lines, etc. Now the objective of this tool is to create an AC pulsation pattern. It comes with its leads, its manual, and it's deciphering because you're going to have to know what timing you're going to set the event. All of this is included in the package. We're going to demonstrate through our slides to show you how you're going to use this. And we're going to keep it so simple that you'll wonder why you don't own it now. There's not one scan tool on the market that can give you what we are about to show you. Using the lab scope of your choice, a tool that you already have in your shop, and the first look sensor in combination, these two will improve your productivity for your technician. Let's take a look at this wonderful tool. We're going to show you how to simply use the first look sensor to diagnose mechanical problems on today's sophisticated engines. First, let's assume that we're going to do some practice. We need to practice on a known good vehicle first so that we can better understand. We have a known good vehicle, General Motors product line here, and we're going to locate the fuel pressure regulator. In doing so, we're going to disconnect it and continue with our test. With our vacuum hose disconnected and plugged, we'll now attach our tool to the port on the pressure regulator. With our first look sensor connected to the port on the pressure regulator, it will absorb the waveform shock of any hydraulics that increases or decreases in the fuel rail at any given moment in time. This value will be displayed on your lab scope. By cycling the key on, we can see that the fuel pump is exerting pressure against the pressure regulator, delivering the amount of pressure that the pressure regulator is set for and the specified amount needed to start the vehicle. This proves that I have a good fuel pump, a good pressure regulator, and volumes passing by the regulator on this return system back to the tank. If the waveform was simply a flat line or didn't move much, then I would have a no fuel volume and or pressure exerted against the pressure regulator, and hence a sign of a possible no start due to a fuel pump issue. Connected to the same port, the same connection as the previous slide, we're now going to expand our time frame on our scope out and add a number one injector firing trigger. So using dual trace on your lab scope, looking at the voltage pattern of the fuel injector, and now viewing the waveform from the first look sensor, you can see when the injector fires, the hydraulic drop inside the fuel rail. This proves that fuel is being delivered through your injector and that it's not a dry shot. By adding all of the injectors to the screen, changing our time frame and our screen for sample, we can see all six injectors. We've placed the firing order in order above each of the injectors. Notice, though, that all of the injectors are at different levels. This is because there's a forward fuel rail closest to the pressure regulator and an aft fuel rail, something that's further away. 
The ones further away are the cylinders to the back of the engine. The cylinders closest to the fuel rail are the larger spikes. But all are hydraulically delivering fuel into their cylinders. We have physically unplugged an injector for the purpose of identifying lack of fuel volume flow. You can still see the fuel pump waveform. The number 5 injector does not have the drop that it once had. Compared to cylinders 1 and 3 on its companion side of the engine, we can see definitely we have no hydraulic flow. Hence, the misfire in the cylinder is a fuel delivery type problem. Here is a normal pattern of fuel injectors at idle. Again, the separation and pressure demands is based on the fuel rail design. This time, connected to a 3100 General Motors engine, there's a lot of thickness of hash upon the pattern. This generally indicates that we have clogged or dirty injectors. Cleaning the injection system will improve the wave pattern and deliver the fuel better. Can the first look sensor help us in a no start diagnostics? Absolutely. In this no start application, you can see that the key has been cycled and the engine is being cranked. The fuel injector pulses documented for its 720 degree rotation and you'll see no fuel pressure at the pressure regulator because of the waveform. It does not have enough height and or pattern to it. Now let's take a look at compression testing using the first look sensor. First, we must apply it by sticking it to the tailpipe. We may have to stuff some rags in the tailpipe. Remember, the engine is off for this test. Under a cranking compression pattern, you can see the pulsations of the exhaust timed with each event. We are also running a second trace of the injection system or the ignition system, depending on your choice. In this case, it would be the ignition. Placing the cursors to outline our 720 degree rotation, we're now going to take a measurement. Using the time applied chart that came with your tool, pull it out of the box and look at it now. Dividing the total measurement by the number of cylinders will give us the one-sixth, in this case, identification of frames. The measurement and calculations tell us that it's 116 milliseconds apart. By using individual cursors to identify 116 milliseconds apart for each of the measurements identifies each ignition point of the cylinder. Shifting the cursors 180 degrees now shows us the exhaust pulse of the cylinder. The opposite of top dead center is exhaust dead center. Cylinder timing will depend upon how many number of cylinders you're working on. Let's take a view of a running compression through the exhaust pipe at idle. At idle, we now see that we have a compression pulse train and it's separated by a second indicator mark of the ignition to give us our reference. Measuring with cursors between our two given references, it's 162 milliseconds of time. Dividing that number of cylinders will give us the position that we need. Now we need to shift the pattern. By shifting to the right 180 degrees, we now are lining up perfectly with our exhaust pulses, which means that this engine is a healthy engine with time-cammed crank relationship. Now let's show you a no-start that has a mechanical problem. First, we need to acquire our signal and place our cursor. The measurement of our cursor, as seen here, is 446.3 milliseconds of time. Divide that by 6. Placing the cursors on the ignition pattern and firing order, you can see that there's no real alignment to our pattern. Now it's time to shift. Shifting the pattern 180 degrees to the right, there are no exhaust pulses lined up. This engine is a no-start because of a mechanical problem. We never even had to open the hood. To better answer the question on the screen, no, none of the exhaust pulses lined up correctly. 
This is just one more example of a Chrysler 27 with junk timing components. Nothing lines up accurately to the exhaust pulses. Therefore, it's a mechanical no-start condition. So to wrap up our demonstration here, Pico supports this tool fully within its software. So if that's your lab scope of choice, you know that your tool is already programmed and ready to go with this. If you own a different tool, such as the Snap-on, Varus, and or uh, Modus units. These tools also work wonderful with this tool. It adapts to any and all of the lab scopes. You can adapt it to the MasterTech, you can adapt it to the ATS, you can adapt it to the LS2000, whatever the lab scope of your choice was. To wrap up, we'd like to thank you again for spending time with us. We'll offer more training in the future, and I hope this tool becomes a great tool for you that it has for us in helping us diagnose today's modern engine. If you have questions for Mr. Nelson, he can be reached by using the information shown here. Please visit our website as shown to get more information about Cenex technology and the first look sensors, including how to obtain the sensor kits and manuals for performing diagnostics on either spark plug or diesel engines.